and we in the number one spot, why give it up? But it's also, you don't panic, you don't stray away from, you know, what, what you've been doing, you don't, you know what I'm saying, try to do, try to be Superman, just, just keep doing what you're doing, man. Just keep doing what you're doing. That's exactly what the Jaguars need to do. Welcome into Teal the Show. I'm Jamal St. Cyr alongside Ashlyn Sullivan, Jaguars team reporter. Ashlyn, thanks for joining us this Friday as we get ready for the Texans matchup. You know, it's always good when you can say the Jaguars are in first place in the AFC South, right? Right. Truthfully, I'm not used to it. I'm so happy the Jaguars are at home as well. It feels like we've been on the road for three months. So, yes, looking forward to Sunday. You know, I don't think any of us are really used to saying that the Jaguars <laughs> are in first place because it's been a while, and it's understandable why. It's it's been a rough few years here in Jacksonville, but things are, are changing. And right now, the confidence inside this Jaguars locker room, despite the two losses, is growing from week to week. We know what it can be as well. Like, we've seen it. We know how we are when we, we play efficiently, when we're able to establish the run, when we're able to, to throw the ball, and everything comes together. So just having that experience now as a group, there's no excuse for us not to be able to think that we can't do this. So I think just the confidence is growing from putting it out there on the field, making the plays, and, and looking at each other like we're a good football team. It, it, it's, you know, we said it before, but like we've seen the proof that we're a good football team. I, I would say that's the, the major difference. We've seen what we can do um, with the first home game and the game after that against LA. We just got to continue that, uh, that trend. And, um, you know, guys are feeling good. Guys are feeling confident. We, we just got to play together, man, continue to play together. As bad as it hurt on Sunday, you know, those are things that you can fix. Um, and that's the good thing about it. You know, it's when there's problems that you can't really fix, whether it's lack of talent, lack of effort, you know, toughness. You know, those are all things that, you know, are hard to fix, you know, but for us, it's just execution, not shooting ourselves in the foot. So, you know, I think for us, it's, it's another way to just kind of keep growing that confidence and, you know, believe in that we can play with anybody. It takes some evidence sometimes, um, but you want to have faith from, from training camp. But we did. We had enough to, to get out and grab some wins and, and have some good performances. But, you know, we still got work to do with. I think guys do believe and the confidence is high. In no small part is that confidence growth because of the job that Doug Peterson has done since he's gotten here in Jacksonville. It feels like he hasn't been here that long, but things are just night and day since before he showed up already. Oh, it's, it, it is night and day. And it's, I always say he's kind of like the big brother that just put his arm around this franchise and was like, okay, I got this, don't worry. <laughs> Even post game in Philadelphia, the guys were upset. It was awful weather. You know, we're at wondering, you know, is this a major blimp on the radar for the Jaguars? And I love when Coach Peterson said in his post game presser, we're gonna be fine. You know, it's week four, everything is going to be fine. I understand this team is young, we have to learn. But then I loved what he said on Monday, you know, time at some point is going to run out and you have to fix these mistakes. I think he's so clear that he sees the progress this team is making and he's not freaking out, so no one else should. And that calming presence is good for this Jaguars roster and has really earned the trust and faith of this team. And guys on this roster are ready to run through a brick wall for Coach Peterson. <laughs> You no, know, we got coaches that believe in the players, and you got players that believe in the coaches. When you got guys believing in each other in this organization, that's what you need. And you know, it's kind of hard to go around not trusting somebody, but you know, you got this trust and this belief that I know my coach will put me in a position to make this play, so I'm gonna trust this play that he's calling. That's good. I love that. That's the guy who I love to play for, and I'm more than sure he's gonna give me the right call to be in the best uh, position to make plays and win games. And that's how you build confidence. That's why it's different. You know, like I said, I told you even going to Philly, you know, we didn't get the, the win that we wanted, but guys was ready to run through a brick wall for Dub because we know everything that he has done for us that gives us the opportunity to win the game or get us a position to change his culture around. So you know, got guys like that who you trust, man, you'll do anything for it. One of the keys to the Jaguars' early success this season has been the play of their defense. and their wins, the defense has played lights out. So far through four games, the Jaguars have nine turnovers. They had nine turnovers all of last season. <laughs> so this is a pretty good turnaround. <laughs> it absolutely is. And I even think last week when you had the fumbles from Trevor Lawrence, I think a lot of that was due to the weather. I don't expect that that's something that we're going to have to get used to right. here in Jacksonville. So, yes, it is very clear that that is the bread and butter for this Jaguars defense is to get the ball and turn it over. I expect that again on Sunday. You know, you want your offense to get extra possessions. They are preaching it. So it only makes sense that it's going to continue to happen. Yeah, and they, they do it every day in practice. They talk about it in meeting rooms. And now they've got that first defensive touchdown of the year. So they've got a taste of putting points on the board. And these defensive guys are hungry to keep making turnovers and possibly even score some more defensive touchdowns. Guys are trying to make plays, man. We're just trying to get out there. Ain't nothing in the rule book say we can't score on defense. So, you know, we're just trying to do that. You know, we can't. We can't just go out there and just be out, oh, you know, get a pick. No, you get a pick, man. Get in the end zone, bro. And then the rule base say you can't score on defense. 
The Jaguars defense isn't the only one that will be on the field. Of course, the Texans defense is going to show up, and they're going to try and give Trevor Lawrence and that offense some problems. Lovey Smith is kind of a defensive guru. He has a, a very signature style of defense that could give the Jaguars a few problems. Yeah, it's very traditional. You know what you're going to expect. Even Coach Peterson on Monday said, this is what we're going to see on defense. I know Lovey Smith, but yes, it's no secret. The offense has to play better. And Trevor Lawrence, you're not going to win a football game when you're fumbling it four times. Yeah. He knows that. And I love how he had to say, yes, I believe even myself, my confidence is still there, but Trevor has to play better on Sunday for this to work. We're going to see Zay Jones back on the field wide receiver. It's very clear this offense works best when Christian Kirk and Zay Jones are on the field together. I expect that to look better than it did last week. And yeah, and Christian Kirk, when the opportunities come his way, catching the ball. I mean, I know the weather was, was horrendous last week in Philadelphia, but when the opportunities come, make the most of them. Yeah, it's up to this Jaguars offense to play some clean football and not allow this Lovey Smith defense to force turnovers the way they've been known to do in their history. The number one thing is they play fast. You see them fly around. Um, they try to create one line of uh, one line of defense with their backers and their D line active group up front. Um, still wants to play the traditional, you know, shell cover two uh, defense, but um, you know, he mixes a lot of that single high defense in there as well to help help stop the run. So we've got to be able to handle a lot of the movement, you know, um, but it's still kind of a traditional, you know, 4-3 base defense that, uh, that he, he's accustomed to. They're going to present some challenges for us. They play hard. You know, they're flying around all over the place. And I know that's obviously it's a big one for them. It's the division game, big one for both of us. So we'll have to see if the Jaguars offense can put a bunch of points up on the board. That would be a good home game for the Jaguars as Feels like they haven't been here for a while. We'll take a quick break on Teal the Show and we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about the matchup and even have our predictions for the game. That's straight ahead as Teal the Show will continue after the break. Welcome back into Teal the Show. All right, Ashlyn, it's time for us to talk a little bit more about this matchup. One of the keys is going to be slowing down Damian Pierce. I know there are a lot of Florida Gators fans out there who are watching this guy play in the NFL that were very upset last year. Damian Pierce is a very good running back. Nobody tell Dan Mullen that because he probably still doesn't know. But the Jaguars defense understands that Pierce is going to be a tough guy to stop. Oh, this yes. Week. I am one of those Florida Gator graduates that is pounding <laughs> the table. I told you so. I told you this guy was good. Hello. But yes, absolutely. They're going to have to stop the run. And truthfully, that's a division. Every single divisional matchup, there's that guy that the Jaguars know they need to stop. That run defense last week was not where they wanted it to be. I asked Dewan Smoot in the locker room this week, and he said, you know, it just was a bad game. Yes, there are things we can fix. It's not this big season-long crucial problem. I expect them to bounce back this week, but they're going to have to stop Damian Pierce, that's for sure. That'll definitely be a big part of it. I know a lot of people at home may not realize that weather was really bad there in Philadelphia. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I thought was, I was a goner. I mean, I, I talked to players about wringing out their hair in the locker room after yeah. the game. The weather was really bad. So we're going to write that one off a little bit because <laughs> of the weather and expect this defense to have a, a bounce-back performance. Mm -hmm. Between weather and win things they won't have to deal with here on Sunday it should be a much cleaner game for them overall uh, the defense did get their turnover Andre Sisco has been playing lights out Rayshon Jenkins has been playing phenomenally uh, Doug Peterson talked about it a little bit this week about how important they can be for this defense he said you know in week one he didn't feel like the communication was mm -hmm. there from them but since then it's been lights out the rest of the way I mean Rayshon Jenkins has got an interception Andre Sisco has got two interceptions that safety play is going to be key again this week when you're going against a quarterback like Dave Davis Mills, right. a young quarterback. He's kind of in the same position that Trevor Lawrence is in. Second year, still trying to grow. Those safeties are what can confuse you mm -hmm. and make the plays and, and give him some struggles along the way. For sure. And, and you hope for the Jaguars defense that they stop the run early to force Davis Mills to throw it downfield, take some chances, maybe make some throws that he wish he could take back. And, and I go to Texans wide receiver Brandon Cooks. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy has haunted the Jaguars. I can recall standing on the Texans field and hearing his name over the loudspeaker what felt like 20 times. For some reason, Brandon Cook seems to single-handedly beat the Jaguars these past couple of games. I think he's faced them four times now and has over 100 receiving yards in each of those games. You got to stop Damian Pierce, but then if that's 1A, 1B is stopping Brandon Cooks. Yeah, Brandon Cooks is definitely a problem. I still remember the catch that he made in week one last year. It was scary. It, 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 
Yes, Brandon Cooks is a very underrated wide receiver in the NFL, and he is a guy who can wreck games. So far this season, he's been a little quiet, but the Jaguars don't want to be the week that he mm -hmm. comes to life and explodes out there. All right, on the other side of the field, the receiver that you want to see get back on track, Jaguars fans, Christian Kirk. Last week was a struggle. Again, we're going to write some of it off to the weather and kind of <laughs> let some of the drops say, okay, well, the ball was wet, such and mm -hmm. such. But, you know, Christian Kirk didn't have a great game last week, but when the Jaguars have been clicking, he's been a big part of what they done the, the ability to move him around the formation get him matched up on linebackers and and get him in space that is clearly a part of the core philosophy for this Jaguars offense yeah and when he does click he clicks early it's in the first quarter where you see his presence and sadly I think the big part of that was Zay Jones not being on the field we talk about that unselfish receiver play and when you watch those Christian Kirk bid first downs or touchdowns you see Zay Jones taking the safety in the corner out with him that hurt the Jaguars big time, not having Zay Jones on the field. Jamal Agnew steps in and does a great job, yeah. but Christian Kirk was paid to be that number one guy. He's got to play like that number one guy this week. All right, this is a big game. The AFC South yeah. is, is looking like everybody's struggling. If the Jaguars can start the year 2-0 and in the AFC South, this could help them very much when you start looking at the rest of the schedule. The Jaguars have one of the easiest schedules the rest of the way of anybody in the NFL. So a win on Sunday, all of a sudden, they're really in the driver's seat for the division. Yeah, and it's that bounce back game. And truthfully, this game shows me, are you the Jaguars of week one and week four? Are you the Jaguars of week two and three? three? Because they're very different Jaguars. Right. Um, if you can handle business in front of your home crowd on alumni weekend, honoring Tony Baselli, you have to beat the Texans at home on Sunday. You have to handle business. You got to get your confidence back. That shows me this is the new Jaguars. If they lose, everyone's talking about they're the old Jaguars. You're right. You got that 100% right. And, you know, some of the players that I talked to about the mistakes, they, the reason they feel good about where the team's at is because they say it keeps, it's different mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's not the same mistake each week, week in and week out. Christian Kirk talked about it earlier in the show where he said, you know, it's not a talent deficiency right. that the Jaguars have. It's just the little mistakes that they have to clean up. Now, they do have to clean them up early because you can only say, oh, there's a long season ahead for right. so long. At it's some point, five. it yeah. starts to, to catch up with you. It's week five already. Next thing you know it's week 10 so you can't keep saying oh well we've got a couple of weeks it's still early no they have to clean those up and they can't keep making new mistakes each week but you have to feel good when they're not making the same mistakes over and over and over again so uh, we like the Jaguars chances all right Ashley it's time to pick the game but before you and I make our picks uh, let's bring in 1010 XL's Frank Frangi Frank how are you feeling about what the Jaguars can do on Sunday Jamal, I like the Jaguars this week. I think they've got the better team. I think they've played pretty well much of the season. I think they're going to be very good at home. You saw how good they were at home against the Colts. I like the Jaguars in this game. I like this team. I like the way Doug Peterson's coached this team. Trevor Lawrence is going to be a very good young quarterback. And I think they embrace the home field. I like the Jaguars against the Texans. All right, thanks, Frank. All right, Ashlyn, do you think the Jaguars can get a win? I do think they can get a win, but I actually think this game is going to be closer than people think. Yes, the Texans are winless in this season, but the Texans are kind of like that little brother that never goes away. And they make games a lot closer than people think when they look at the Texans' record. I predict at the start of the fourth quarter, Jaguars fans are going to be a little nervous because I do think this game is going to be closer than we think. The Jaguars, I do think, will win because they have the better roster, but they can't shoot themselves in the foot. We've talked about that so far this season. If they execute the way we've seen, like I say, week two and week three, be the Jaguars of week two and week three, and you're golden. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think this is going to be a very close game. The Texans have played just about everybody close this mm -hmm. season, so it's not that they're a team that just goes away. And the Jaguars have struggled against the Texans. Yeah. I mean, they haven't beaten them eight straight losses to the Texans. We talk about that with the Colts coming to Jacksonville, and this is the other card of that. Sometimes teams just struggle with the way one another plays. So the Jaguars have to get past that mm -hmm. and finally break that streak. I think they do it on Sunday. I'm going to go with a, a maybe a three-point win on this one. Ooh, uh, it's yeah, really close. I, th I think it's going to be really close <laughs> in this one. Uh, folks are going to be on the edge of their seats, but you know what? <laughs> Uh, a win is a win, no matter how you get it. Yeah. But I, I do think this is going to be a very close game because this Texans team just historically has given the Jaguars nightmares. Mm -hmm. And the players in the locker room know it. Oh, yeah. And the Texans have to win. Like, this is it. This is the Texans. Their back is against the wall. They are right. winless. They're the only winless team in the NFL. 
Texans have to win this week as well. And I don't want to call it a must win for the Jaguars, but, man, it feels like it. It feels like it. You know, it's early in the season, and the players and coaches will say every week's a must win game, but it's an AFC South game against a team that's supposed to be one of the worst teams in the NFL, according to a lot of experts. And. <laughs> You know, these are the games that you can't give away. This is a must-win game for Doug Peterson and this group. We'll check back in with you. Hopefully, the Jaguars can walk out with a W. All three of us think that the Jaguars will get the win. We'll have to wait and see how everything comes together on Sunday. Thanks for tuning in for Teal the Show. We'll see you on Monday night, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be talking about a Jaguars win. Good night, and go Jags.